Thanks for watching this video tutorial on the Audison AF Forza DSP amplifiers. The AF Forza family of amplifiers are compact, powerful, great sounding, and have advanced bit processing for OEM correction and system tuning all built in. Using the configuration wizard. One of the great advantages of using BitDrive software is our configuration wizard. The wizard will help set all of the input and output settings and get your system ready to go in a quick and efficient manner. While you may not always need to use every feature of the wizard, it is the quickest way to get your system ready, even if you want to perform some functions manually. This tutorial covers the configuration wizard in BitDrive version 1.0.4. Later versions may have updates or changes. As always, we start by opening the BitDrive software and selecting the bit amplifier we want to configure. In this case, it's an AF-M 5.11 bit. Click here to maximize the BitDrive software window. As you can see, the device has not been configured. This icon at the top, the magic wand, opens the configuration wizard. Click here to start. The first option allows you to disable the optical input. This input is enabled by default, but if the installation includes a DRC-AC controller and the optical input is not being used, it's possible for the system user to accidentally select it with the DRC-AC and then they would lose all system audio. If the DRC-AC is present in the system and the optical input is not in use, we recommend disabling it in this step. Click on Next. Now we configure the master inputs. The high level, low level switch doesn't change the input sensitivity directly but it does change the available input options since OEM integration to speaker level inputs can be far more complex than RCA inputs from an aftermarket source. If we select low level here, there are far fewer options needed. If you need both high level and low level inputs, start with high level and then change individual channels later as needed. Remember that each input channel can be used with a high level input or a low level input, but not both at the same time. This particular OEM system has four channels of output, two front and two rear. So let's select that. Then we define where the subwoofer signal content will come from. Front is the default, but some systems need the base to come from the rear and some customers would like non-fading base regardless of the front rear fader position on the OEM head unit. This can be edited later if we need to. You can see that the software has automatically assigned input one to left front, input two to right front, input three to left rear, and input four to right rear. Now let's click on next. With high level inputs, the default setting is 11 volts AC. This is appropriate for most deck power OEM systems, as well as most OEM amplified systems. When interfacing with OEM amplifiers, it's recommended to test the AC voltage of the subwoofer outputs using a quality digital voltmeter. Remember that the AF Forza native high level inputs handle a maximum of 22 volts AC. If more voltage capability is required, you can add the F4 in expansion card. This is a great time to confirm that we've connected all of our inputs correctly. To do this, play track four, pink noise, at about 75% volume on the OEM head unit. You can see that now all of the virtual LEDs are illuminated. Now let's use the front rear fader control on the OEM head unit and fade all the way to the front and then all the way to the rear. You can see when we fade to the front, the virtual LEDs for input channels three and four go dark while the virtual LEDs for input channels one and two are illuminated. Then when we fade to the rear, the virtual LEDs for channels one and two go dark 
while the virtual LEDs for channels 3 and 4 stay illuminated. So we can confirm that the front and the rear speakers are connected correctly. Now let's use the left-right balance control in the OEM head unit. When we go all the way to the left with the balance control, the virtual LEDs for input channels 1 and 3 are illuminated, but the virtual LEDs for input channels 2 and 4 go dark. If we balance all the way to the right, LEDs 2 and 4 are illuminated, but LEDs 1 and 3 go dark. This tells us that we have connected our inputs correctly, front, rear, left, and right. Now, if you'd like to use the wizard to set the input sensitivity for each channel, play track one, the sign sweep track. You can do this step manually if you prefer, using the sign sweep track and the virtual LEDs, which have overload indicators built in. Make certain the vehicle doors are closed so we don't get any chimes playing over the system. If you're using an aftermarket source, whether it's a head unit or a preamp or a streaming device, it's okay to skip over this step. Click on Start to begin this process or click on Next to skip past it. We're speeding up this process just a little bit in the video. When you see small differences in channel levels, that usually tells us the OEM equalization is different from one channel to another, as it is in this instance. For the next step, switch to track three, pulses, and click on start. This step tests for input polarity on each input channel and for the presence of OEM delay on any of the input channels. Again, if you're using an aftermarket source, it's okay to skip over this step. Again, we're speeding up the process a little bit in the video. Here you can see that all of our polarities are correct. However, the rear speakers were delayed 0.97 milliseconds relative to the front speakers, and so the BitDrive software has delayed the front speakers 0.97 milliseconds to align the front and rear signals. This will allow us to use delay normally when we tune the system and get the results we expect. Now, if you'd like to use the DEQ process to smooth out the OEM equalization, you're going to play track one again. Click on start to begin the process. Click on next if you'd like to skip over it. Again, if you're using an aftermarket source, it's okay to skip over this step. If you know that you're going to want to apply the dephase process, you may prefer to skip this step and perform DEQ manually when you're performing dephase. We will address this in a future video tutorial. If you're interested in what the initial and corrected responses look like, you can move this window out of the way to see the before and after graph. If you'd like to examine the results in more detail after this process is complete, you can open the Input EQ tool and examine the Input RTA graph using pink noise as a signal. You can repeat this process in case something interrupted it, such as the ignition timing out or someone opening a vehicle door by mistake. And when the process is complete, click Next. Now you're going to select the output channel diagram that's closest to the system you've installed. Different versions of the software may use different symbols here. In this version, 1.0.4, you can see that this icon indicates passive crossovers are in front of the speakers, and any green icons indicate a preamp output of the bit amplifier rather than one of the amplified outputs. The options presented will vary depending on the bit device you're working with. We are using an AFM 5.11 bit. So first let's set it up in a pretty standard front rear sub configuration. So we'll select this one. This does have a center preamp out, but we don't need that. And otherwise it's the closest 
to a basic five channel system. Now you can see that each output channel has been assigned to a particular type of output, front or rear, passive components or subwoofer. You can't see it, but each output channel has also been assigned our default starting crossover point and slope. But now let's change this to a fully active system with front tweeters and front mid ranges. See this column where each speaker is default selected to other this is a drop-down list of possible Audison speakers you could select. When you select a speaker from the list, we will insert our recommended starting crossover point for that driver. Depending on the version of the software you're using, the speakers on this list will vary. If you need to edit your outputs for a system that isn't listed here, first click on a system that's close and then click here to edit the system before proceeding. If you forget to do this, you can edit the system later, but this is the fastest way to do it. This screen lets you enter in the distances to each speaker from the listening position. You can use centimeters or inches. Once you have entered in the distances, BitDrive will apply the proper amount of delay to align all the speaker signals in the time domain so that the speakers arrive at the listening position relatively in phase. Two things to remember here. First, if you haven't taken your measurements yet, you can skip over this step and enter them later on. The second thing to remember is that several functions are available for fine tuning after this step. Fine tuning of your delays, inverting your output polarities, manipulating the phase with all pass filters, all these things are available later in the tuning process. Okay, now turn down the source unit so we don't damage anything and we're finished with the configuration wizard. This grayed out screen indicates that data is being downloaded from the PC to the bit device. And when this is complete, the screen will return to normal. Remember at this point, to disable any unneeded outputs. In this example, the sixth channel is that center channel that we didn't need. So let's disable that by clicking on the edit icon and clicking on this button here. Now you can see it's no longer visible on the screen. Now, as we select different output channels of our system, you can see the crossover points and slopes have all been assigned by the wizard. If we try to close the BitDrive software, we will be prompted to finalize the device in case we forgot, and we'll also be prompted to save a copy of the configuration file to the PC. You're finished. The system might be ready for you to tune. Our next video will address manual dephase and also some advanced configuration options. Thanks for watching.